Hallelujah. Now, um, the Lord said to tell you that people will be healed as I'm preaching. So don't wait for me at the end. Is that all right? Don't wait. You don't, you don't need a preacher to collect what Jesus did for you. If you know. You see, the job of the preacher is to tell you what Jesus has done for you. But you are the one that will take it. Did you hear what I just said? Actually, you need a preacher. But why you need a preacher is not for him to say, take, take. No. You just need him to tell you what Jesus has done. Are you following that? Once you understand what Jesus has done for you, you take it. There was a statement I made in the first service that I want to repeat. And I need you to listen closely. Um, put away anything that can distract you. This is not time to do phones. If you wanted to do Facebook, you should stay at home. Now you want to face the book. <laughs> a lot of Christians are doing Facebook when they should be facing the book. Since you are doing Facebook, what did you get out of Facebook? You know, as the more you use Facebook, the more money Mark Zuckerberg makes. Have you ever asked yourself how they make money? Let me tell you how these tech companies make money. They make money by collecting and selling attention. What did I say? They make money by doing what? By harvesting and selling attention. Attention is the currency of life. I said attention is the currency of life. Do you know what you pay to receive anything in life? It's called attention. If you pay school fees, but you don't pay attention, your school fees will be useless. If you pay for a car, but you didn't pay attention, the car could kill you. The primary manifestation of love is attention. If you marry a wife and you don't pay attention, that family can scatter. Attention is the currency of life. You become what you attend to. I said you become what you attend to. How did, you be, how did I become a doctor? By attending to medical things. I attended lectures. You see, you attend lectures. Do you notice that? So what is the idea of attending lectures? Is so that you can pay attention to the lecture. That's how you became a lawyer. Where is the lawyer on this side? Where is the lawyer? Is there a lawyer somewhere on this side? That's how you became a lawyer or a teacher. You pay attention. <laughs> if you don't pay attention, do you know the proof of worship is attention? You worship what you are attending to. If you want to know who you are worshiping, check who you are paying attention to. What does God require of you? He said, my son, give attention to my word. Give attention. And that is exactly what these technology companies are collecting from you. So when they collect your attention, they sell your attention to advertisers. So the more time you spend on their website, the more money they make. They are tracking you. They are tracking how many hours you are spending on the website. They know. The technology, all those cookies that they are, they, they are placing on your devices. Tell them everything about you. They control your mood. I don't have time to talk about technology this morning. But be very careful with those phones. Your phone is stealing your destiny. I hear some preach Christian. Everybody that stole my destiny, vomit my destiny, bring out my destiny. The destiny thief is that thing that you are holding there. <laughs> so just cast out that demon. See the demon that you are holding. Cast out that demon. You will be free. <laughs> hey, hey, this is important. It's not a joke. Some of you, you are paying attention to strangers. Oh, 99% of the people you meet on that internet, they are strangers. So if you give attention to strangers, strangers with an agenda. So be very careful. That thing, that device, a lot of people are going to go to hell courtesy of their phones. Pay attention.
attention. This is very important. Sometimes I begin teaching by mentioning these things. The reason is because <laughs> this is the... Do you know that five minutes with your phone after service can wipe out all the sermon that the man of God preached? The seed planted in you. That's what the Bible means. He said, he said the seed by the wayside are those that when they hear the word, do you understand the point? They didn't understand it. It didn't sink into their hearts. So what happens? The birds of the air. And you see, all of this technology, they are flying in the air. The birds of the air, they come and collect what you got. So you are hearing, you are always hearing messages, but they don't profit you. It's because you are planting two kinds of seeds inside your heart. The Bible says don't plant two types of seeds into your person. You are planting the good seed and you are planting the terrible seed. So after church, do, do a cleansing. Remove, open that phone. You see the way you lock that phone tells you that there is something very important inside. Yuck, yuck, you draw this uh, uh, pattern that goes across like that. So nobody can guess. So when you open that pattern and you enter inside that phone, then the real you begins to manifest. If you want to know what you are like, you look like your phone. If your phone is not holy, you are not holy. Huh. You say, my friend, now what did I do to you today? I'm your friend. I'm trying to help you. Don't you see that? <laughs> the devil is a, is a bad devil. You may think he's joking with you, but he's not. That phone, some of you, you are feeling exams because of that phone that you are holding. You are very smart. But the phone is making you behave as if you are dumb. Because it's stealing your time. You can't concentrate. You are watching all kinds of nonsense inside your phone. And you are praying for miracle. No, but look at it. Excuse me. Can I have this phone here now? Just watch. So imagine, so I have my phone in my pocket here. Shakara, ba, 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 ba. Father, in the name of Jesus. Yeah, Lord, I command breakthrough. Hey, Father, as I go for this interview, I receive favor. Can you imagine, you are going for, you prayed for favor, and you are going to an interview with pornography in your phone. You don't understand that as you are sitting in that interview place, Satan is working against you, because you have his property. Then you wonder why you are not prospering. You have to choose. Do you want this non trash, or do you want the best that God has for you? This is not a joke. Your soul is at stake. Your future is at stake. Your destiny, your pr prosperity, your family is at stake. So take the matter very seriously. As soon as church is over, go and remove all those strangers from inside your phone. Dismiss them. Say, get out. Get out. You don't belong here. Get out. What are you doing here? I'm not following you anymore. Can you imagine? Jesus said, follow me. Then Twitter came and said, follow me. <laughs> eh? Eh? And Instagram said, follow me. Who are these people that you are following? Do you know them? Do you want to end up where they go? And some people are suicidal. Something is telling you, you've been listening to crazy people on the internet and they are telling you that you are not beautiful. Because you have a spot on your face. They say, look at you, look at you, look at you. Look at you. And your friends are posting, they post like that and they post something. <laughs> I say, look at me. I'm there in New York. And then look at you. You are still here in uh, in uh... <laughs> This matter is very important. I'm not wasting time. I'm not wasting time. You are listening to lies on the internet. Remove this stranger so that God can bless you. Dismiss them. Hallelujah. The Bible says, break up your fallow grounds and don't plant your seed among thorns. That's what I'm doing. So that the seed, the soil of your heart can receive the good seed so that you can enjoy the fullness of your redemption. Somebody give God praise in this place. You understand? <laughs> Take these steps. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. Blessed be God forevermore. Okay, 
I want you to listen to this statement because it is very important. I made it before, I'm going to repeat. The only blessing you can receive from God is the one that Jesus paid for. I'm, I'm going to summarize a few things and then we are going to move on. I said the only blessing that you can receive from God is the one that Jesus paid for. That is it. So it becomes then crucial for you to know what did Jesus pay for. Because if you don't know, you don't know what is available to you. You don't know what belongs to you. You don't know what you can receive. Help me with, let's go to John chapter 1 and verse 16. John chapter 1 and verse 16. Yes, thank you. Put it in, uh, first of all, in NIV or New King James. Then we'll come to the Amplified. Everybody, let's read this together. Want to go? Help me. Change it to the ones. Thank you very much. Let's read. Out of his fullness, what has happened to us? We have all received grace Grace upon grace. Now, go to the Amplified so that let's save some time. Yeah. Yes. Now, watch everybody. See what we receive, but where are we receiving it from, everybody? That's the key. Where, is, where are all of these things coming from, everyone now? Out of his fullness. Out of the super abundance of his life and of what he has done. What happens, everybody? We have all received all had a share and we were all supplied with what? One grace after another. Spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing and favor upon favor and gift heaped upon gift. Where is this coming from everybody? Out of his fullness. Out of the fullness of who Christ is and what Christ has done. Listen, there is nothing more important to the victorious life, to the triumphant life than knowing and growing in what Christ has done for you. Nothing. There is nothing more important. Why is that so? Because that is from where you are going to get your share. Look at it. We have all received. We are, in other words, there is an abundance in what Christ has done, but until you see that, until you connect to that, that's when you then begin to receive out of that fullness. You will be supplied with one grace after another. Hallelujah. Spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Out of his fullness. Hallelujah. Spiritual favor upon favor, gift upon gift, testimonies upon testimonies, answered prayers upon answered prayers, hallelujah, healing upon healing, deliverance, where are all of these things coming from? Out of his fullness, out of what Jesus has done. Unfortunately, many preachers are not telling us what Jesus has done, they are just telling their stories. The gospel, the church must go back to Jesus, we must get back to Calvary, we must get back to where our price was paid. The thing that is going to set you free permanently from the devil and his agents is a revelation of where your price was paid. Oh, I said a revelation of where your price was paid. When you know that, and the devil knows that you know that, he knows that he has lost your case. Because Jesus said, you shall know the truth. And what is going to happen now? The truth, the truth will make, make you free. Jesus didn't say you shall pray the prayer. And the prayer shall set you free. Prayer is important. But you see, if you are praying prayer that is not rooted on a revelation of the truth, your answers can only be temporary. Because after some time, you go back to bondage. But when you now have an understanding of the truth, and then you pray in the light of that understanding, you will walk in victory. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21, the Bible says, God made him to be seen, 
Jesus, who knew no sin, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21. You said to stop at 120, right? Excellent. Thank you. So, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21. Please help me, um, uh, our media guys. Yeah? Hello? Oh, that is it there. Okay, I was, I was, I was maybe expecting something else. Another version. He said, for our sake, look what God has done for us in Christ. I want us to read this scripture. Then we are now going to the book of Isaiah to study for that this morning. I'm teaching. This is not corrective preaching. This is instructive teaching. There's a difference between corrective preaching. That means people have done something wrong. You want to correct them. There's a difference between that and instructive teaching. You're teaching people how something works. Hey, hey, hallelujah. I want to teach you how the victorious Christian life works. And I want Amen. you to watch it as we follow together. Amen. Follow. So, God for your sake. Say that for my sake. For my sake. What did God do everybody? He, he made, made Christ, Christ virtually, virtually to, to be, be seen. seen. Who, Who knew, knew no, no sin? sin? Jesus did not know sin. But God made him to be seen. Why did he do that kind of thing? He must have a reason. Hey, and once the act has been done. Are you following the point? Yes. The results are guaranteed. The things that I'm teaching have nothing to do with your feelings. They have everything to do with facts. There is a difference between feeling and facts. Facts are facts, no matter how you feel. You're a woman, even if you don't feel like it. <laughs> there are some people now, because they don't feel like, can you imagine, I am a man. Then because I don't feel like a man, I go and start taking injections and go and start cutting off stuff and, and doing stuff so I can become, I, so I'm, I'm sacrificing fact for feeling. So, I, instead of being what I am in reality, I will become what I feel. Hey! Hey! How can you become what you feel? These are facts. Redemption and the victorious Christian life, they run on facts. And let me tell you the best part. Hey! Oh God! Glory to the name of Jesus, the Son of God. These things, once upon a time, we are prophecies. But now in our time, they are no longer prophecies. They are facts. They have happened. You see, there are two sides of prophecy. You have the thus said the Lord side of prophecy. And then on the other side, you have it came to pass. Are you following the point? When Isaiah and Co, oh, glory to Jesus. See, there are times it's difficult to contain what is going on inside my spirit. When Isaiah and Co prophesied about these matters, Isaiah lived about 700 years before Jesus. About 700 years before Christ. When Isaiah was prophesying those things, they were still in the future. Are you following that? Then the Jews, we are reading these prophecies. There is a Messiah coming. He's going to carry our sins, carry our sicknesses, carry our diseases. Even the Samaritan woman, you remember the one that Jesus spoke to, she said, we know that Messiah is coming. And when he comes, he will solve all these problems. He will take care of all of these matters. So for them, it was futuristic. They were reading the thing. Until one day, Jesus came to the temple, to the, what's it called, synagogue in Luke chapter 4. And they gave him the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He opened and he read chapter 4 verse 18, Isaiah chapter, uh, Luke chapter 4 verse 18. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me, the anointed one, the Messiah, to preach the good news, the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to announce release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to send forth as delivered those who are oppressed. They downtrodden, bruised, crushed, broken down by calamity. Keep going. Uh, he has sent me to proclaim the accepted and acceptable year of the Lord. I want you to see that last part, the way the Amplified Version put it. He said the day when salvation and the free favors of God, 
when they do what everybody now they profusely abound. abound that's why i came and then listen now the bible said and he closed the book he rolled up the scroll and he gave it to the attendant the eyes of everybody everybody were looking at him and then jesus made a statement next verse he made a statement look at what he said he said today this scripture that you have been reading this thing that used to be prophecy has been hey, 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 hey. This thing that used to be prophecy, this thing you used to read it for centuries in your synagogue, today they are fulfilled in your presence. The things you used to read in the Bible, today in the name of Jesus, they manifest in your life. It's no longer some good, nice verses in an old book. They are coming out of the pages of this scripture to manifest in your case. Do you Amen. believe that in the name of Jesus? Let me hear you. Amen. So at that point, it was no longer a prophecy. It had become reality. It had become tangible. And now here is the good news. You are alive 2,000 years after that thing happened. Let me tell you the devil's problem with you. When I came to understand this, there are things that the devil will say, I, I don't pray about them. I laugh. Do you know why I laugh? There is something the devil can do about something that will happen. But there is nothing he can do about something that has happened. Give God a clap off if you understand what I'm talking about. You see, you, you see, you can block something. Satan said, you will never be healed. You will not be healed. I laugh! <laughs> Satan, you're correct. Because I'm not planning to be healed by his stripes. We will, we will, we will. What you are trying to stop has already happened. The problem is that you didn't know. You did not know. And forget about how you feel. You see, this thing is not running on how you feel. Oi, when you agree with what God said, what God said will change how you feel. I said when you agree with what God said, what God said will change how you feel. But if you side with your feeling against what God said, you will never have what God said. And God's word is a far better witness than your feelings. Because your feelings change. Blessed be God forevermore. Have you followed up till this point now? So we are now going to go to the book of Isaiah and pursue a study so, so that you can see what Jesus did. And the reason, of course, he did it was because we could not do it for ourselves. We could not do it for ourselves. Nobody could pay the price for their own salvation. Amen? Get the teaching from the first service and listen to it. But come with me now to Isaiah chapter 52 so that we can do some study there. You're going to see the results of a sacrifice. Ah, this, these three chapters I'm following, 52, 53, 54, they have blessed me beyond imagination. So chapter 52 from verse 13. 52 from verse 13. So God is describing, Isaiah was prophesying about a person he called my servant. You will notice that that servant is in capital there. It was a reference to the Lord Jesus Christ. So he said, behold, my servant shall deal wisely and shall prosper. He will be exalted and extolled and he will be very high. Higher than the highest. Hallelujah. He said, for many, the servant of God became an object of horror. Many were astonished at him. You see, Isaiah saw, Isaiah saw Jesus long before Jesus went to the cross. And he saw him on the cross. So Isaiah was now describing Jesus. Hello. Isaiah was now describing Jesus hanging on the cross, paying for our sins. So watch that. He said he became an object of horror. Many were astonished at him. His face and his whole appearance were mad more than any man's. His form beyond that of the sons of men. Do you have the NLT? 
If you have the New Living Translation, help me to put it up so that you can see the point there. Thank you very much. Everyone, let's read this together. I want to go. What does he say? He said, but, but many, many were amazed, were amazed when, when they, they saw him. him. His face, His was, face so was so disfigured. He seemed hardly that human. he seemed hardly human. Listen, he's describing Jesus on the cross. He said, his face. How many of you, you have watched the movie, Passion of the Christ? You watched the Passion of the Christ. Ah, that's not many of you. Put up your hand if you have watched the Passion of the Christ. Thank you. If you have not watched the Passion of the Christ, go to YouTube and type Passion of the Christ. You're going to find it free so that you can watch it. The Passion of the Christ was so brutal what they did to Jesus. But I want you to listen. After watching Passion of the Christ, could you still recognize that that was a man? No, I'm asking you, if you look at the Jesus in the Passion of the Christ, can you still tell at the end of all the beating, that that was a human being? No. The answer is yes. Of course, you can see that he's still a person. But look at what Isaiah saw. It's Isaiah said his face was so disfigured that he seemed hardly human. In other words, the passion of the Christ did not fully tell the story of what happened to Jesus on the cross. And the beating was not just on his back. It was everywhere. On his face, on his back. The, the, what they used to beat Jesus was a Roman scourge. It was made up of, you know, a handle. And then you saw it in Passion of the Christ. You know, strands. And at the end of the strands, they put pieces of metal, sharp rocks, and uh, bone, and things like that at the end. So that when they now hit that thing on the victim, the strands will coil around the person, then they will pull it. And when they pull it like that, it will strip away flesh. It will strip away all kinds of blood vessels. So the person is bleeding. The truth actually is that you will not see lines. You will just see raw flesh. Because that whip has torn away all of those things from the victim. That's what was done to Jesus. His face was so disfigured that he seemed hardly human. And from his appearance, one would scarcely know that he was a man. Keep going. Next verse. And he will start too many nations. Kings will stand speechless in his presence. For they will see what they had not been told and they will understand what they had not heard about. Next verse. Now, put the next verse. For you to understand, there were no chapters and verses in Isaiah. So actually, what you call chapter 3 is not a new chapter. It's not a new story. It's a continuation of what happened. Go to chapter 53, verse 1 now. Hello? Now, put it in the New King James so that we can read, read further. He said, who has believed our message? That's what I want to say. Who has believed our report? I want it like that. Uh -huh. Who has believed our report? Which report? Is the report from this chapter 52 that he's referring to. Who has believed this report of what the suffering servant did? And those that believe the report, watch that latter part. He said, to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Yeah. So what he's saying is that when you believe the report of what Jesus has done for you, the arm and the power of the Lord will be revealed to you. Amen. So you hear the Bible say the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Have you read something like that before? Please listen to me here. The preaching of the gospel is more than empty talk. As I'm preaching, power is coming out of what I'm saying. Amen. Do you know why there is power inside? Because the hand of God backs what God accomplished on the cross. When it is preached, it is powerful. I'm not praying, oh God, send the power. I am preaching the power. The power for your deliverance is in the gospel. It's in this thing that Jesus did. What do you have to do to release that power? You believe it. You agree with it. You accept it. 
You personalize it. As I'm preaching, you are saying, he did that for me. He did that for me. It was for me that he did it. Remember, for our sakes, for our sakes, he, for our sakes, he didn't do it for his sake. It was for my sake. He didn't need to do any of those things for his sake. Jesus did not come down so that he can get exalted. He was already one with God. He did not come down to earth so that he can become great. He was already everything. So why did he do it? It was for our sake. Hallelujah. Who has believed our report and to whom has the arm of the Lord been what? Everybody be revealed. revealed. Keep going. The next verse. He shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. That's a description of Jesus. A root growing out of dry ground. If you saw a tree growing from this tile, you will know that this is a miracle. Is that not so? The ground cannot be the source or sustenance of such a plant. That's what he's saying about Jesus. A root out of dry ground. He has no form, no beauty or comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Keep going. He is despised and rejected by men. You see, when you are despised and rejected, if you know that Jesus has been despised and rejected on your behalf, you will be delivered from the shame and the pain of being despised and rejected. It doesn't matter anymore because he was Amen. despised and rejected in my place. Amen. He was despised and rejected by men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. You see the word sorrows there? The word literally is pain. A man of pain and acquainted with sickness. Put it in the Amplified Classic. Watch it. He was despised and rejected, forsaken by men. A man of sorrows and pains. Do you see that? Eh? Yes. And acquainted with what? Everybody? With grief, grief and, sickness. and sickness. The word literally is pains and sickness. How did Jesus Christ, the son of God, become a man of sorrows and a man of pains and a man of sickness? Because he didn't have any. It was when he stood in our place. Man of sorrows, what a name for the son of God who came, ruined sinners to reclaim. Hallelujah. What a savior. Then the other verses, you know, go on there. He said, guilty, vile, and helpless we, spotless lamb of God was he. Full atonement. Can it be? Hallelujah. What a savior. Lifted up. Was he to die? It is finished. Was his cry. Now in heaven. Exalted high. Hallelujah. <laughs> what a savior. The man is describing this man of sorrows. A man of sorrows, of pains, acquainted with sickness. And like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we did not appreciate his worth or have any esteem for him. So Isaiah, see, don't forget, this is prophecy. This was before the thing happened. So Isaiah is describing it. He could see it, how he was rejected by people. But look at the next verse, verse 4. Surely, somebody say surely. Surely. I can't hear you say surely. Surely. So this is not guesswork. Hey, believe what I'm saying because your healing is inside it. Amen. Your deliverance is inside this thing that I'm Amen. announcing. This is it. Your deliverance is not in me pushing you down when you come out for prayer. No, it's in this fact of what Jesus has done for you. Surely. So there is no doubt here. This is not guesswork. What is it that has happened now, everybody? Surely he has borne our griefs. He has borne. He has griefs. carried it. Our griefs, 
our sicknesses, our weaknesses, my sicknesses, my diseases, and carried our sorrows, our pains of punishment. Yet, we ignorantly considered him stricken, smitten and afflicted by God. In other words, we thought that he was suffering for his own self. Now, look at the next verse, verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement, the punishment necessary to obtain peace and shalom for us and our well-being. Where was that punishment, everybody? It was upon, upon him. him. And with his stripes, what does the Bible say, everybody, now? We, we are healed. healed. We are made whole. made whole. By the stripes. That thing that they beat on Jesus purchased your healing. You say, Prophet Nan, how? Don't ask me how. How is not your business. Your business is to believe it. <laughs> Let me ask you, how many of you must understand how before you can agree with something? If you waited to understand how, you will not have a phone, no. Do you understand how your phone works? 90 something percent here, you don't. I don't. Do you understand how you will take something like this that is not connected to anything and you will touch it, it starts behaving? You will swipe it like that, it, it will start doing something. Do you understand how? If you know, there are lots, but there is a how, oh, there are patents. You see all that swiping, all those things you are doing, they are, they are inventions, but you don't understand how. Do you understand how this thing connects and you will be watching, can you imagine that somebody, a friend of mine in the US can be watching this service now, live. How? Do you understand how? Do you understand how a baby formed in the womb before you started having your children? If you are not a doctor or a medical person, you will not understand how. Leave the how alone. Do you understand how the blood of Jesus can wash away your sins? Explain it. You see, the question of how is a big distraction to many believers. Leave the how alone. Mary asked the, the angel that question. The angel came and said, you're going to conceive. You're going to bring forth the son of the living God. Huh? Mary said, how will this thing be? Seeing I don't know a man. I can imagine the angel saying, you really want to understand how? Okay, let me give you an idea and check too how that one will come to pass. The spirit of the Lord will come upon you. The power of the most high will overshadow you and then something will conceive inside your womb. <laughs> and it will be called the son of God. You do, do you understand that how? <laughs> but did it happen or it did not happen? It happened. Hey, tell somebody, say, leave the how alone. Believe God. How alone. Believe God. That matter of how is the genesis of doubt. So the assumption is that because you don't understand it, it cannot happen. Who told you that? If you imagine that you promise your child bicycle, you imagine your, your four year old. Say, I will buy a bicycle for you. Assuming he waited to understand how, how you are going to get the money to buy the bicycle. Will you ever get a bicycle? So what does he do when you say, I'm, I'll buy a bicycle for you? He says, oh, daddy, 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 thank you very much, daddy. Then from that day on, my bicycle, my bicycle, my bicycle, my bicycle, my bicycle, my bicycle. He's not interested in how. <laughs> if you are going to borrow the money, that is your headache. But he has a bicycle because you said it. If your little child can believe you, you should be able to believe God. Amen. You go to a doctor and the doctor said, um, uh, you know, we are going to do this operation and uh, we have to take out this uh, something from inside this place and you need to sign here. How many of you understand the how of the operation? <laughs> what did you do? You believed the doctor. You trusted him and you signed and they put you to sleep and you are snoring. <sighs> you surrendered your body completely to a stranger doctor to open inside and do operation inside without understanding how. <laughs> then when they finished, they sutured, closed the place, and then you woke up. You say, doctor, thank you. Doctor, thank you. Doctor, thank you very much. You didn't even know what they did inside your stomach. <laughs> you had no idea what they did inside you. But you woke up and started thanking the fellow. They gave you some medicine. Listen, you have a lot of faith, oh, 
The only problem is that you are not applying your faith to God. What is faith? Faith means believing that God is not a liar. God is not a man that he should lie. Not the son of man that he should repent. Has he said and will he not do it? Has he spoken and shall he not make it good? He has given commandment to bless and he has blessed and it cannot be reversed. Come on, somebody give God praise inside this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Faith means that you agree with God. You agree that God will do what he said he will do. It is guaranteed by his throne. He said, by his stripes, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. You see, the peace there is shalom. It's comprehensive well-being. Hallelujah. The punishment that was necessary to bring you shalom was laid upon Jesus. And with his stripes, you were, not you will be. I said you were healed. healed, not you will be healed. Hallelujah. So let's continue. Go back to the regular trans, uh, translation. Look at it in verse 6. New King James. Look what he says. We will move quickly because there are some parts I want you to see. All of us like sheep. What has happened to everybody? We have gone, gone astray. astray. We have turned Turn. everyone to his, his own, own way. way. This describes our rebellion, our sin. When we see, that scripture tells you what sin is. You say, all of us like sheep, we have done what? Gone oh, astray. astray. Sin means that you are going astray from the path that God ordained. You say, we have turned. You see the word turned. Imagine that you are walking straight and you turn. Do you know, once you turn, you are off the narrow road. Does that make sense? You are walking straight and then suddenly you turned. As soon as you turned, you are off the narrow way. We turned everyone to his own way. So, sin means going your way. Every time you go your way, you are going astray. Hey, I said every time you go your way, you are going astray. Why is that so? Because your way is not the way. I said your way is not the way. This is the trouble with families. So, the husband goes his way. And the wife, she's going her way. <laughs> and then the marriage is going away. <laughs> what is husband and wife supposed to do? Two of you are supposed to look at yourself in the face and say, darling, your way is not the way and my way is not the way. Let's follow the way. You now understand why when Jesus came, what did he say? He said, I am the way, the truth and the life. What that thing is saying is your way is not the way. Your way is not the way. I am the way. Your way is your woe. I said your way is your woe. Your way is your woe. My way is my woe. Since you started going your way, what have you gotten from your way? It was in your way that abortion destroyed your womb inside. It was in your way that you picked up HIV AIDS. It was in your way that that boyfriend began to slap and beat you. I don't understand some ladies. Who. I don't understand some ladies. Before the guy marries you, he's already beating you. And you are still following him. You say you have reconciled. You have reconciled with a stupid boy who is beating you, he's slapping you. Even before you married him. And you are hoping to be happy after you marry him. I don't understand. Some ladies have sore dust inside their head. <laughs> now, I'm your friend. I'm your friend. <laughs> I'm your friend. I'm your friend. I'm, I'm trying to help. No, please don't be angry with me. I'm trying to make you angry enough so that when those guys come, you can tell them, get out of my life. Get out of this place. <laughs> and some of you, you need to sack some boys like that from your life. Send him a text. Say, the preacher said I should sack you. Get out. <laughs> Don't call me again. <laughs> your, your way is your woe. All of our trouble comes from going our way. But God so loved us that he did what? He sent the way. <laughs> he said, I am the way to eternal life. 
I am the way to the Father. I am the guarantee of your healing, your deliverance. I am the way to genuine prosperity. Hallelujah. I am the way to peace. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Blessed be God forevermore. Amen. So, go back to Isaiah. We are going to go quickly so that you can see. So, the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. Look at verse 6. All of us like sheep we have gone astray, turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. You see that word laid on him is a convergence. It's a convergence. You understand convergence? Imagine that you're throwing stones from up there. You threw stones and all the stones from this side, that side, up, down, this way, they are all landing on this bottle. I don't know if you are following that. So imagine, bah, bah, bah. The Lord has literally, oi, the, literally, the word is, the Lord has caused to meet on him. The Lord has caused to land on him. The iniquity of us all, the chastisement, the punishment that was due to all of us. You say, but how can one person carry it? It's because of who he was and who he is. An ordinary human being couldn't carry that. But because he's Emmanuel, hallelujah, somebody in this place, you could carry the weight of the world, our iniquities, your sin, your sickness, your shame, your disgrace, your barrenness, your curses. He could carry all of them upon himself because he is the only one that could carry them. The Lord has caused to meet on him the iniquity of us all. Verse 7, he was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. As a lamb before his shearers is dumb, so he did not open his mouth, he's silent. Verse 8, he was taken away. For the oppression, for the transgression of my people, he was stricken. Verse 9, they made his grave with the wicked. Hmm? But with the rich at his death. So you can see the prophecy about Jesus being buried in a rich man's grave. Do you see that in that place? Isaiah could see those things. Eh? Even though he has done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Do you remember we read that in Peter in the first service? There was no violence. He didn't do anything wrong. There was no deceit in his mouth. Next verse, he says, yet it pleased the Lord to do what? To bruise him, to crush him, to put him to sickness and to pain. Why are you doing that to somebody who has not done anything wrong? Because he's standing in our place. It pleased the Lord to bruise him, to crush him. He has put him to grief. Then he made his soul an offering for sin. Hallelujah. When he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days. The pleasure of the Lord will prosper in his hand. Now, look at the next verse. Verse 11. Look at verse 11. Put it in the Amplified. I want you to see something here. This is wonderful. <laughs> he shall see Everybody help me to read. One to go. He shall, he shall see, see what? The fruit of the, the, fruit of the travail of his, soul of his soul. And be satisfied. And he will be satisfied. In other words, he will see the results of his work. He will see the fruit of all of this suffering. But friend, now what is the fruit? The fruit was our salvation. Your deliverance. Your healing. Amen. You don't know. Every time you receive what Jesus paid for you. Jesus is not in his head. He says, yes. Amen. Give it to her. I paid for it. Give it to her. Yes. Collect some more. Amen. Come on. Take some more. I paid. I paid. Hey, you will receive what Jesus paid on your behalf. For. Amen. You see, a lot of people are begging for what Jesus has paid for. Even as I'm preaching, be receiving it. Say, you took my infirmities. You carried my disease. I am healed. Don't wait until the end when we finish teaching. You see, this thing is a lot of work to explain it to you. But if you understand and believe it, you will not need somebody to minister to you. You will become a minister. Amen. You will become a source of deliverance to other people. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And then in the middle of the night, you can take your stand on what Jesus has done. Amen. Glory to God Almighty. Amen. You will see the fruit of the sacrifice of his soul and he will be satisfied. Go to verse 12. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great. He will divide the spoil with the mighty. 
Because he poured out his life unto death. Oh, glory to God. When Jesus poured out his life unto death, his life swallowed death in victory. You see, <laughs> you see, something can swallow something. Do you remember that the magicians of Egypt, you remember them? They came when Moses came before Pharaoh. Stay with me. Stay with me. This is teaching. That's why he's taking time. Stay with me. I'm almost done. The magicians of Egypt, when they came, Pharaoh came uh, Moses came before Pharaoh. Pharaoh said, uh, can you perform some miracles if you are serious? You say I should let your people go. <laughs> I don't believe in that your God. But anyway, let me give you a chance to prove if he's a serious God for my consideration. The thing is a matter of power. So Moses said, yes, yes, yes. God gave me some miracles to work, to convince you. Pharaoh said, okay, sure, go ahead. And then Moses threw his uh, rod down. He became a snake. Pharaoh started, began to laugh. Pharaoh laughed. <laughs> Moses, is this all you collected from the wilderness after 40 years in the place there? This is, we used to do this trick before you ran away. <laughs> Then he called Janis and Jambres. You remember those magicians of Egypt? He said, show Moses that we also produce snakes from there. <laughs> so, the Bible said Janis and Jambres, those magicians, they threw down their rod. It became snakes. <sighs> I can imagine Moses. He said, Moses, I can, Moses even say, God, this miracle you gave me is worth 20 shillings. What's going on? <laughs> the thing is so common. Everybody is performing the same miracle. God told him, he said, no, don't worry. <laughs> Just watch. Something will swallow something. <laughs> so Moses was watching <laughs> so the rod snake of Moses went like that and tracked one of the snakes <laughs> he swallowed <laughs> he swallowed that the magician who owned the rod his eyes opened like that <laughs> then the same rod snake of Moses went 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 Whoop! he swallowed the next snake then it went, went, swallowed the next snake. Then the rod snake began to go to Pharaoh. <laughs> Pharaoh said, Moses, 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 stop, stop. Moses, stop this. Moses, stop this thing. More, more, more. Pharaoh shifted from his throne. He said, Moses, Moses, stop. So Moses came and remember, God told Moses, when you're going to take it, take it by the tail. Which is a death sentence, by the way, because if you take a serpent by the tail, it will turn around and, and, and strike you. But God is telling Moses something here. He said, don't confront it because even this anointing, be careful because it, it can kill you. <laughs> you see, many of these anointed people, they don't understand that anointing can destroy you. You have to be careful. So Moses came. The thing turned. Moses said, no, it's me. I'm the one. I'm the one. Come down. And then he took the, he took the serpent and he changed into a rod. Now listen to story. Do you know that all of those magicians lost their instruments of magic? They never got their rods back. They never got their rods back. Come on, somebody give God praise inside this place. Hallelujah. Anybody who is doing enchantments against you, yes, they lose their instruments of magic. Yes, there is no enchantment against Jacob. Yes, there is no divination against Israel. Yes, in the mighty name of Jesus, the Son of Amen. God. Amen. It's a picture of the all-consuming fire, and that rod did not increase in size. It consumed them, came back to its normal size. When Jesus poured out his life unto death, his life swallowed death. So you hear the Bible say, death is swallowed up in victory. How was death swallowed? Death was overwhelmed when the life of the Son of God was poured out on the cross of Calvary. Having spoiled principalities and powers, what did Jesus do? He made an open show of them triumphing over them by the cross. He did it. Jesus defeated death on your behalf. He abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the preaching of the gospel. Somebody here, you have been terrorized by the fear of death. That fear is dismissed from you now. 
Yes. Take your set free in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Yes. Something has been telling somebody, take your life, take your life. I cast out that spirit of suicide. Amen. I release hope into your spirit in the name yes. of Jesus. Jesus paid. He poured out his life unto death. When he poured out his irresistible life, it swallowed death. It swallowed sickness. And come on somebody in this place. When you receive that life into your spirit, hallelujah, mm. there is a quickening that takes place inside you. You become a new creature. Jesus paid in full. He was numbered with the criminals. Was he a criminal? Of course not. But he was numbered with them. With the transgressors. Yet he bore and took away the sin of many. And he made intercession for the transgressors and for the rebellious. So Jesus, from these passages, you can see that he carried your sin. But at the same time that he carried your sin, he carried your sicknesses. At the same place, at the same time. Rafael, what are you saying? I'm saying that just as you can be free from your sin, you can be free from the oppression of sickness. There's somebody in this place, you're always breaking down. You're always breaking down. You, 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 you're well for some You're well for some weeks. You fall ill for some weeks. You recover for a short period. You fall ill again. Now that up and down with sickness is terminated from your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Receive this word right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Now. <laughs> now comes the excited part. The exciting. All of this is exciting. But I want you to now see the next thing. Go back to the New King James Version and we are going to now read chapter 54 verse 1. Now remember that there are no chapters. So this is a continual story. So as soon as Jesus finished paying the price in chapter 53, carrying the sin, carrying the shame, carrying the pain and carrying the sickness, standing in the place of judgment on our behalf, as soon as he finished Paying all of that. By the time you get to chapter 54 verse 1. There is a word. That comes first. What is that word everybody? Sing. Said, sing. Oh baron. Sing. Oh baron. Why are they telling you to sing? Because the price has been paid. The price has been paid. Now there is a song. Who are they telling to sing? They are telling the baron to sing. Why is that so? Because the barrenness has been taken away. They said, you who did not break forth into singing and cry aloud, you who have not labored with child. They said, why are you saying that? Because more are the children of the desolate and the barren woman than the children of the one that was married. The tables have turned. I was preaching in South Africa and I was teaching along these lines. And when I came to this scripture, I said, sing! My interpreter shouted. He said, Jabula! Jabula! Jabula literally means rejoice. Jabula, ni Jabula, ni Africa. Jabula! Jabula! Rejoice! Shout! Ladies and gentlemen, do you know that of all of these religions, they don't have a song? Where are the songs of these other people? There is nothing to sing about. There is nothing to sing about. You still have your sin. You have your sickness. You have your fear. You have your terror. And you are distributing the terror to other people. There is nothing to sing about. Look at the other religion. This is not a joke. All the songs of the church we are released from Calvary. Oh, it all. Hallelujah. Do you know the reason there is a song in your mouth was because the price has been paid. Yes. They say sing. Jabula. Rejoice. Look at the songs of the church. Look at the song. Sometimes I'm worshiping. Songs just burst out of my spirit. Sing. Check it out. Check all the religions. Where are their songs? There's nothing to sing about. 
But look at the church. Billions. Billions of songs. More and more. Nathaniel Bassey and all of these singers, sound musicians, worshipping, praising. You yourself, lifting up your song. Watch. Say, this is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. He said, all that day long, this is my story. This is my song. The songs of the church. Billions. With more being born every day. You can open your mouth and start singing. I, I, told, I tell my children, I say, you can sing your song. It's your song. It doesn't have to sound like anybody's song. It doesn't have to. I, I, I can start singing now. Jesus, you are Lord. Jesus, set me free. Hallelujah, because you died, I am free. I am free. You carried my sin. You carried my sickness. Therefore, Ferdinand is free. Free forever. Free, free, free. <laughs> ah! You don't have to like it. It is my song. Right. When are you going to sing your own song? Hallelujah. They say, sing. If you understand redemption, you will wake up in the morning shouting. I'm not teaching religion. I'm not talking about how you feel. I'm talking about life. I'm talking about facts that have been credited to your account. Sing. Then they continued. Sing. That's verse. Keep going now. I want to quickly show you some things before we pray. He said, enlarge. You see, all of these things are consequences of Calvary. I told you, the only blessing you can receive is the one that Jesus paid for. Jesus purchased enlargement. He said, enlarge. Enlarge. Enlarge the place of your tent. Let them stretch out the cuttings of your dwellings. He said, do not spare. Lengthen your cords. JCC, are you listening to this verse of scripture? Yes. He said, don't spare. Lengthen your cords. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen the stakes, deepen and lengthen. Why? Next verse. He said, because you are going to expand. You are going to break out on the right and on the left. He said, your descendants are going to inherit the nations. You will make the desolate places to be inhabited. Enlarge. Some of you, you are too small. I said, you are too small inside. You are too small inside your head. You are too small in your plans. You are too small in your expectations. Enlarge. That local business that I here. That local business that you are doing can go international. Enlarge. Yes. Who has believed our report? You remember that question? As I'm preaching this thing, it sounds too far-fetched for some people. But if you believe it, you will see the arm of the Lord. I, I said you will see the arm of the Lord revealed on your behalf. Amen. Enlarge. Enlarge the place of your tent. He said you are going to expand to the right and to the left. Verse 4. He said do not fear. You will not be ashamed. Why is that so? Because your shame has been taken away. He said neither be disgraced for you will not be put to shame. He said you will forget the shame of your youth. Somebody in this place you have been abused and wounded. I said you have been abused. You've been carrying that wound of abuse. Salios Lasida, you've been carrying that wound of abuse, sexual abuse and all kinds of abuse. Now you are released from that wound in the name of Jesus, the son of God. Amen. You will forget the shame of your youth. You will not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore. Hey, look at that next part. Everybody in verse 5. He said, for your maker is your husband. Oh God. <laughs> I wish you understand. Do you understand what that verse is saying? The maker is holy and perfect and righteous. He is excellent. He's above all. How did the maker get married to the creature? He said, your maker is your husband. How was that union possible? Because something happened on Calvary. Something happened that changed your nature. Your price was paid. You were redeemed. And suddenly, you became the bride of your maker. The bride of Christ. Set apart. Said, your redeemer is the holy one of Israel. The God of the whole earth shall he be called. 
Your maker is your husband. Hi, my dear sisters, if you understood this scripture, your earthly husband is good, thank God for him, but he's a secondary husband. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Brother, even your wife is a secondary wife because you too, you are the bride of Christ. Amen? Amen. Years ago, I remember one day the Lord spoke to me. He said, do you know that this your wife was married before I gave her to you? No, he said, this your wife was married. So I was alarmed. I said, ah, you mean I married a woman <laughs> that was already married? And then he said, no, no. He said, he told me, he said, she was my wife before, she was my bride before I gave her to you as wife. Then he said something that terrified me. He said, treat her in such a way, remembering that you are going to give account to her senior husband. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> if you want to clap, clap properly. Clap properly. <laughs> So, imagine, imagine what is going to, where is Jesus? Jesus is getting married. <laughs> Jesus, imagine that you treat, <laughs> it is our Jesus in quotes. He was the one that acted Jesus in the drama. So, imagine that you live with your wife, knowing that you are going to, this woman is already the bride of Christ. And if you handle her wrongly, her senior husband will handle you. Do you know that husbands will be very careful with their wife? He said, I'm going to slap you. You will slap Jesus' wife? You are looking for trouble. <laughs> your maker is your husband. Somebody give God praise inside this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My maker is my husband. Everything that a husband represents, your maker will represent that in your life. Your maker is your husband. Your maker is your provider. It's your protector. It's your shield. Hallelujah. Amen. The rest of the whole place is filled with this benefit. Look at verse 8. I'll just show you a few of them and then I will, I will wrap up. Look at verse 8. He said, with a little rat I hid my face from you, but with everlasting kindness. kindness. Somebody say everlasting kindness. Everlasting this kindness. This is kindness that is permanent. Grace that is unceasing. He said, I will have mercy on you because I am your redeemer. Hallelujah. Amen. Jump to verse 10. He said, for the mountains shall depart. The hills will be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from you. Nor, my, nor shall my covenant of peace be removed. Where did the covenant of peace come from? Because the prince of peace gave his life for our redemption. Says the Lord who has mercy on you. Now, go to verse 11. Go to verse 11. Put it in the NLT. Ah, this is wonderful. Stay with it. NLT from verse 11. Oh, storm-battered city, troubled and desolate. I will rebuild you with precious stones. I will make your foundations from lapis lazuli, sapphires. Next verse. Stay with it now. I will make your towers of sparkling rubies, your gates of shining gems, your walls of precious stones. Keep going. I will teach all your children and they will enjoy great peace. Keep going. You will be secure. You see, you will be secure huh? under a government that is fair. Go back to New King James. I want to show you a few things there. Oh, this is, this is astonishing, people of God. Are you there? Ah. Uh -huh. In righteousness, you remember righteousness, everybody? He has made him to be seen who knew no sin so that what will happen, we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. Now, in righteousness, you will be established. You will not just be a visitor going up and down, righteous and sinful, up and down. You will be established in righteousness. You will be far from oppression. Hallelujah. Amen. You will not fear. You'll be far from terror because it will not come near you. Indeed, they shall surely gather together against you, but not by me. He said, whosoever shall gather together against you, what's going to happen to them? They will fall for your sake. It's a benefit of the cross. Because you are gathering against somebody that God has redeemed. You see, the problem is that preachers are preaching these things apart from the cross. This is not alone. It's a consequence. These are the results 
of his sovereign. So look what he now says in verse 16. He said, behold, I created the blacksmith who blows the coal in the fire, who brings forth an instrument for his work. Uh, and I have created the waster, the spoiler, uh, who destroys. What God is saying, the, that destroyer, I'm the one that created him. The one that's plotting against you, I'm the one that created them. There is nothing they can manufacture that I cannot handle. Hallelujah. Amen. Put the next verse. He said, no weapon fashioned against you shall, shall prosper. prosper. You see, that's a consequence of the cross. Who is fashioning the weapon? It is the devil that Jesus spoiled on the cross. So no weapon that is fashioned against you shall do what? Shall prosper. prosper. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment, what is going to happen? You, you shall will condemn. condemn. Why will you condemn them? Because who this are they to condemn somebody that God has justified? It is God that justifies. Who is it that condemns? It says, this is the heritage. Of the servants. Hey, don't miss this. What is a heritage? A heritage is not an idea. It's your inheritance. It's not a prayer point. It's yours. You see, your heritage is something that belongs to you by reason of inheritance. He said, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is from, is from me, says, says the, Lord. the Lord. Go to chapter 55. Next verse. Just go. I want to show you something there. I'm, I'm, I'm about done. He said, oh, everyone who is thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy, buy and, and eat. eat. Yes, come, buy wine and milk without money, without price. Why can you now receive all of these things without money, without price? Because they have been paid for. Does that make sense? This is an invitation to the river. The river of the spirit. Come to the waters. Hallelujah. Come to the waters. Come to the river. You don't need money. That's why when Simon the magician brought money to buy something that Jesus paid for, they say your money perish with you. Get out of here. It's been paid for. You receive it by faith. You who have no money, even if you think you don't qualify, they say, come. Come. You are wondering, will I be accepted? They say, come. You say, my case is too difficult. They say, come to the water. Without money and without price. Glory to the name of Jesus Christ. This is quite something for you, isn't it? Huh? You will read the whole thing. It continues. I don't have time to go on and on because we need to draw to a close. But I have spent time this morning in church to deal with what Jesus has purchased for you. Do you know, because of what he did, you can now receive what he paid for. And let me tell you the best part. After he paid all of this price, he rose again from the dead. So now he is alive to enforce what he paid for. He is able to save to the uttermost. Because he ever lived to do what everybody now to make intercession, to take his stand and say, Yes, I paid. When you come to Jesus with your sins and you say, Father, forgive me, Jesus said, I paid. Give it to him, Father. He's there to intercede. When you come to receive your healing, he says, Father, I paid. Release it to her. I paid. When you pray a prayer in his name, it is as if he is the one making the request in heaven. Because you are calling his name. He said, Father, I give it to him. We do not have a high priest who cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. So let us come boldly to the throne of grace. Now you can come without condemnation to the throne of grace. You can come. You can come. Huh? Brothers and sisters, servants of God, do you know why this thing is take, it's taking time? The reason he's taking time is because I'm showing you how the thing works so that you can work it. Now you understand. So when the man of God says, in the name of Jesus, you unclean spirit, come out. Do you know why he's able to say that? It's because he knows what Jesus has done. And when Jesus finished doing all of these things, everybody, the Bible says, wherefore God also has highly exalted him. And he has given to him what? A name that is above every name. So that at the name of Jesus, what is going to happen now? Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord 
to the glory of God the Father. Come on, somebody give him praise inside this place. This is what Jesus has done. So, what must you do now? You must receive what he has purchased for you. How do you receive? By faith. By identification. You see, it was for my sake he did it. It was for me that he did it. When he died, he died in my place. What he carried, I will not carry. Every curse, every hex, every bondage, Jesus bore them so that you can be free. But what do you have to do? You believe the report. Accept that this was for me. So some say, but, 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 since Jesus has paid, why doesn't it work automatically? No, it will not work automatically. There is soap in the market, but is everybody's clothes clean? What must you do for your dress to be clean? You get the soap and apply it to your dress. That is appropriation. If you don't take it, it will not be yours. But I know you will take it. You will take it in increasing measure. So we are going to pray and as we pray, I'm going to guide you to take. Don't wait for me. The goal is I'm teaching you, I'm training so that you can take by yourself. When a man of God says, oh, come and take it, touch my shoe, touch my shoe. The fellow should get out of the place. I don't need your shoe. I need what Jesus did for me on the cross. Give me a clap offering somebody in this place. Do you want his shoe? No. I don't want to take it from your shoe. I want to take it from where the source. Where Jesus collected it. And the more you listen. You see this teaching? Go back and listen and listen and listen. Study these passages. Confess them. That Jesus did it for me. The more you do, you will walk in victory. And the final part is you will help other people to receive what Jesus paid for. Rise upon your feet and let us pray. 